Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are going to talk about how to grow and propagate Hoyas from cuttings. Recently there has been huge interest in growing and collecting different Hoya species and I just want to show you guys how I propagate my collection. So my mom has been collecting Hoyas even before the Hoya craze started, she's been collecting maybe about 8 to 10 years and so we have over over 100 different kinds of Hoyas in our collection. And just a short disclaimer guys, um, there are many ways to root Hoyas. Um, you can root them in dirt, you can root them in bark, in soil, in perlite. Um, it just depends on what works best for you. And I have tried all different ways on how to root Hoyas and this is what works best for my growing condition. First off, you will need some Leka or they also go by the name Hydroton and you can find them online or in some of the garden centers in the supply area. Next, you will need some plastic cups. Um, I bought these from Amazon, but you can also use the cups you buy from the supermarket. Um, I just like to watch my roots grow, so I bought these clear ones. I am using a rooting hormone because Hoyas can get quite expensive nowadays and you want to give your cuttings the best chance possible. If you don't want to use a rooting hormone that's totally up to you, um, just know that it'll take a little bit longer for them to grow roots. Of course, you will need your Hoya cuttings and here I have Hoya Rangsan. It would be better if you have two nodes per cutting, but I've successfully propagated from single node cuttings before. This here is Hoya Gigas. Uh, it has a big large red flower and they can get quite expensive. I think they sell around $50 per cutting online. Next, we have some Hoya Pandurata, and this Hoya can get quite expensive. So like I said, you want to give your Hoya cuttings the best chance possible. Next, we have some Hoya Lacunosa Silver Leaves, and they're not as expensive as the other Hoyas we have here, but a lot of people are looking for them because of the variegation in the leaves, so there definitely is a market for them. Take one of your cuttings and dip it into the rooting hormone. I've tried many different kinds of rooting hormones and Clone X is by far the best among them. This bottle cost around $25 in Amazon but it's totally worth it because you can use it for hundreds of cuttings and it gives your cuttings that extra nutrients to make the roots grow faster. Go ahead and add some leka to your pot and make sure that the stem is nice and tight and it doesn't wiggle around too much. It is important to remind you guys that not all of your Hoyas will root successfully and some Hoyas are harder to root than others. I have about 90% success rate using this method um, which is a lot higher than when I started propagating Hoyas. Because when I started propagating Hoyas, I had about a 50% chance success rate because I was trying to root them in moss, I was trying to root them in directly into soil, um, I was trying different methods and I wasted a lot of Hoya cuttings so I don't want that to happen to you guys. And I am a commercial grower. I sell these Hoyas in plant festivals and orchid shows and so I need them to grow really fast because the demand is really high right now. Once you've planted all of your cuttings in Leka, um, make sure to label each one of them. A lot of Hoyas look similar to each other so it can get quite confusing when you have a lot in your collection. Also remember to put the date of when you made these cuttings. Now that your Hoyas are planted, you should now add some water to the pots. The water level should be just below the tip of the stem. If the tip is submerged into water, there is a chance that the stem might rot and therefore it will fail to root. 
So it's really important to keep the water level just below the tip of the stem. Place your cuttings in an area with bright, indirect sunlight. Check on your cuttings at least once every week and if the container is dry, um, you should add some water up to the correct water level. And now it's just a matter of being patient and I know it's exciting to watch the roots grow, but yeah, just let mother nature do her thing. So this is what it would look like after about a month of waiting. So this is the Hoya Lacunosa after about a month. And as you can see, the roots are really well developed and they're ready to be repotted into soil. This is another rare Hoya that I was rooting. Um, this is Hoya daumensis and you can really see how well the roots grew on this one. And it just makes me so happy to watch them grow like this. Now that the roots are well developed, they are ready to be repotted into soil. Here I am making my Hoya potting mixture. It consists of two parts regular potting soil, one part leka or hydroton, and one part orchid bark. You can also use perlite if you prefer, but the general idea is the soil should be well draining and provide excellent airflow to the roots and it should not hold too much water. Some people like to use the succulent and cactus mixture which is totally fine. Um, it just depends on your growing condition. Hoyas generally are very hardy plants and they can adapt very well to different kinds of medium just as long as the roots are strong and healthy. Also keep in mind that there are some Hoya varieties that like to stay moist all the time such as the variegated Hoya Bella. So for those type of Hoyas, I usually add a little bit of sphagnum moss into the mixture. So go ahead and mix all of your ingredients together and we will pot your newly rooted cuttings. Choose a pot that is not too big for your Hoya plant. Um, here I am using a 3 inch small pot for my lacunosa. Choose a pot that allows your Hoya to grow for 1 to 2 years before needing to be repotted again. Hoyas like to be root bound and they don't want the roots disturbed too much too often. As you can see here, the roots of this Hoya lacunosa are very healthy and go ahead and place it into the pot and add the mixture around them. You can also use clay pots or ceramic pots, whichever one you prefer. Just make sure that there are drain holes at the bottom of the pots. Press very lightly to make sure that the medium is compact so that the plant doesn't move around too much. Next, I have this Hoya daumensis, which is another rare Hoya from my collection. Um, and it really just makes me so happy seeing how well the roots developed on this little plant. This Hoya originally came from Borneo and has very interesting and unique white flowers. And if you can see here, it even started out growing new growth leads, which means the plant is nice and healthy. Most Hoya species can be found in the rainforest of Asia. In countries like Thailand, Borneo, India, and of course my home country, the Philippines. Once I went on a mountain hiking trip in the Philippines um, in the region called Rizal and I just saw so many Hoyas growing everywhere in nature. They're just hanging off from trees and it makes me so happy that they're growing out in the wild. Next we have this Hoya pandorata which is another rare species from China. And rooted cuttings from this can get very expensive. Um, I looked around the market and they go from anywhere between $50 to $75 per cutting. So like I said, some of these Hoyas can get very expensive. So you don't want to make any mistakes in rooting them. One of the most expensive Hoyas I saw in the market is Hoya Ganungading, which goes for over $1,000. I actually have one that was gifted to me by another Hoya collector, but I'm just so scared about taking cuttings out of the plant because they grow very slow and I think they grew like two leaves per year and that's about it. So now that you have your cuttings potted, I add a little bit of Osmocote 141414 14, 14 controlled time release fertilizer to the top of the soil. 
So when you water your plants, the granules dissolve over time and it provides your plants with trace nutrients that the plants need to grow strong and healthy. So they stay like this for another month to make sure that they are well rooted and adjusted to the medium before I take them to the plant festivals and sell them off to the market. And there you have it guys, that is how I root, grow, and propagate my Hoya collection. Please always remember that each growing environment is different and what works well for another grower might work differently for another, so always keep that in mind. You know, it really makes me happy that more and more people are having interest in growing Hoyas. And not just Hoyas, but plants in general. Um, some people collect orchids, some people collect houseplants and aroids. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful in some way. And if you have any questions, just comment below and I'll try to answer the best I can. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Let's keep growing!